Hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. This is Minister Vanessa with Trinity Destin Ministry. I'm just going to give you all a few minutes to uh, join. Let me know when you have joined um, our Bible study, our first Bible study. I'm excited about that. Uh, seven o'clock, I believe we are going to give about a couple of minutes to um, give people time to join. So thanks so much for letting me know. Hey, Cheryl. Hey, cousin. <laughs> um, give you guys a few more minutes to join. So happy Thursday. I hope everyone had a wonderful Thursday. We're nearing the end of the week, which is always great. The weekend's coming. Um, so listen, I'm just going to go ahead and, and, and say this, that this is my first time doing the live meeting. So um, bear with me. Pray for me, if you don't mind, if that's okay. Uh, we're going to get through this. Um, but I'm excited. Our subject is going to be on absolute surrender. I did put um, the material on the website. Uh, hopefully you're able to go out there and take a look and be familiar with what we're going to be talking about. Um, the Amazon link was also out there in case you wanted to, to purchase and order the books, but not absolutely necessary to do so. Um, so it looks like we're still getting some folks to join. Um, I'm just going to give them a few more, a couple more minutes so that we can be timely. Okay. And just let folks join as we go along, I think, is what, what I'm going to do with this. There's quite a few that I know um receive the invite so i'm just going to give them a couple more minutes to do that can you guys hear me okay i just want to make sure my volume's good Give me a, a wave or thumbs up if you can hear me pretty good. Okay, so um, if, if you have trouble hearing me, just let me know, but um, I'm going to assume that everybody hears me pretty well. All right, it is 7.05, and I am going to go ahead and get started um, with our Bible study and just let people continue to join. Um, so again, I hope you all had a chance to go through go to the website, trinitydestin.com, take a look at some of the things that we have out there, um, the devotionals that are weekly that you can subscribe to receive via your email if you want to, um, as well as, of course, these Bible studies and the prayer and the sermons and such that are currently posted. You'll find more of those coming in the near future also. Um, also, of course, those who don't know me, you can learn a little bit about who I am and about the ministry itself. Um, interestingly, it just um, it's interesting when you when you are seeking God for guidance and direction, um, purpose, um, what he would want for you to do to serve. Um, all of a sudden, he'll just kind of tap you on the shoulder and let you know, um, this is what I'm calling you to do. And sometimes you have to look back and say, really, you sh is this what you want me to do? And then you have to kind of just sit back and say, yep. Yep. OK, we're going to be obedient. We're going to do this thing and um, just allow God to, to use us. And so this is um, where I find myself now. And this is where we are. And um, 
here in the ministry doing this, this Bible study. So um, let us go ahead and just take a moment to pray and get started, okay? Father, we thank you, Lord God, just for uh, another day. Father, we thank you just for your your grace, your mercy, your strength, your power. Father, we acknowledge who you are, Father God. We honor you. We worship you. We submit to you on tonight. We thank you, Father, for this opportunity just to come together and study your word, study more about you, um, study more about who we are in you, Father God. We ask now that you will um, use me to to, to teach your word, oh God, and those who will join and listen, oh God, that they will be able to um, receive and that your word will plant a seed in them, that that will take root <clears throat> in good soil and produce good fruit. So Father, we thank you and we love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, as folks are still joining, just make sure, let me know if you can't hear me. Let me know that you can still hear me. I just want to make sure my volume is good. The audio is good. So I see we've got some folks join. Let me know if you're if you're good with the, with the sound. OK. All right. So let's get started. Um, let's just start from from the beginning. Um, in the Garden of Eden, we we read and we know about the story of, <clears throat> of Adam and Eve. We know that in Genesis 2 that um, um, God had finished creating the heavens and the earth, and then he decided to create man. He said that he created man to till the ground, to um, dress it and to keep it. So that was initially the purpose that God put man into the garden. So he planted the Garden of Eden, put, put Adam there. Um, and of course, we know that this garden had various trees in, in this garden. And there was one that God instructed Adam to not eat of. Okay, he could eat everything, every other tree, but he couldn't eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Verses 16 and 17 of uh, Genesis 2, it specifically says, and the Lord God commanded the man, Adam, saying, of every tree of the garden, thou mayest eat, freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. He said, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. So it was after this um, that God gave Adam, this instruction that he thought the need um, to um, make Adam a help me. So we know the story, of course, again, about putting Adam asleep um, from one of his ribs. He made the woman, of course, her name is Eve. Um, and the Bible says that they were naked. They were naked. And this is this is a this is key because um, just this whole concept of being uh, naked before God. You know, when I was introduced to this concept of being naked, I just thought that is so, that's so rich. You know, that's deep. That's that's something that if you could get a hold of that, um, that just takes you to a whole nother relationship uh, with Christ. So let's hold on to that terminology of um, being naked before God. So they were naked before God um, prior to eating the tree. And they weren't ashamed. They weren't ashamed about it. They didn't have any inhibitions about being being naked. Um, so th there was something about that time frame before um, that occurrence, uh, that mishap, <laughs> if you will, in the garden um, of a certain type of relationship that God intended for us to have being naked before him. So let's go on. So the serpent entered in chapter three. And, and again, keeping in mind, we're getting to um, uh, being surrendering absolutely. We're still working towards down that road. So just bear with me. So the serpent in chapter three of Genesis, um, he approached Eve. Okay, he approached Eve with the intent to twist the word of God, which of course that is what he does. He likes to twist the word of God and get us all off track. And he said to her in so many words, he said, didn't God say you could eat? from any tree in the garden. And in verses two and three, she responded back, 
obviously Adam had told her what uh, God told him because she knew exactly that, you know, God said you, we could not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Every other tree we could, but not this tree. Well, once again, the serpent is contradicting and twisting God's instruction and somehow convinced her uh, that the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was actually good to eat from and it would not kill them, but rather it would make them be like God, to be like him knowing and understanding and having wisdom. Um, so that intrigued her. Now, the thing about this here is that uh, at that moment when um, they had the opportunity to choose, mind you, God gave them a choice. God gives us a choice. He made us being able to choose. Um, and, and they had a wonderful world-changing opportunity. And that opportunity would impact the very existence of mankind. Now, when I talk about this opportunity, now we're, we're getting to the point of where we're talking about surrendering. Would they surrender to God's word? Or would they surrender to the temptation of the serpent? They had a choice to make, a big choice to make. And God said that, that they, okay, again, back in um, chapter two, when he gave the instruction to Adam, he said, again, that they shall not eat of that tree. He didn't say they couldn't eat of that tree. Okay. He said they shall not eat of that tree. So they, again, had a choice to make about what to do about the tree. Which way will they go? Which way will we go? We want to contemporize it a little bit. Which way will they go? To, to what or to whom will they submit to? To what or whom will we submit to? Will we surrender to? So keeping that in mind also, you know, God didn't have to even place the tree in the garden when you think about it. He didn't have to do that. He didn't have to place that tree in the garden and tell them, don't eat of this one. There had to be a reason for that. You know, he had a he had a purpose for that tree. OK, to not eat of that tree as instructed by God meant that they uh, were surrendering not only to God and his word, his instruction. They were also surrendering to his purpose and his plan, even though they didn't know what that was. And I think that um, we find ourselves in that same situation. OK, that. Um, when God gives us an, an instruction that we don't understand completely, we don't know all the details about it, we don't know why, and we just feel like we have to know why, um, you know, all these things, he, he expects us just to, to choose him without necessarily knowing all the details and knowing why. So we too have that choice. So that tree represented um, their ability their willingness to surrender to him, um, not knowing why, but just choosing to surrender to him. Okay. All they needed to know was God and their nakedness and in, in their relationship and their no shame and their no personal inhibitions of their nakedness, nothing to hide, nothing to try to hide from God. Not that they could hide, hide anything from God anyway, no insecurities, no jealousies, Again, they were naked before God. They had this kind of relationship, okay? But they still have the opportunity to choose and to choose to surrender. And all they needed to know really was God. They didn't need to know all of that other stuff and why. They just needed to know God. They just needed to know God. So um, if they had made that right decision, um, Things would have been different. We, we too could have had that relationship uh, to roam in the garden freely and taking advantage of all that God had for us, the best that he has, still has for us, in fact, uh, that he intended for us to have. But Adam and Eve chose, as we know, to surrender to the serpent and the tree. They wanted to be gods themselves with knowledge and understanding of their own. And eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil represented their desire to surrender to themselves, okay, or to something or someone other than God. So in doing that, they basically said that God wasn't enough. 
God wasn't enough. Uh, so when, when we don't surrender to him and we feel that we have to take control of certain things, we have to know, we have to have our hands in certain things. We're essentially saying, you know, God, you're not, you're not enough. And we have to, we have to do some self introspection and really ask ourselves, have we really surrendered to him? Have we really surrendered to him? So we're going to talk more about that as we continue in the lesson. So, so listen, we ought to be in a place of surrendering to God such that no matter what craziness is going on in this world today, no matter what craziness is going on, oh God, in the White House or our government, um, during times when we see and hear society telling us that what we know is right is wrong, and what we know is wrong is right, uh, when, we, when we are dealing with uh, attacks from, from Satan, um, from the enemy, it might be on our jobs, it might be in our homes, it might be um, even at our church, um, in our finances, in our bodies, at school, um, in traffic, this Atlanta traffic, um, how crazy, in any, though, any scenario, you know, where, where God is, is uh, being challenged, his word is being challenged, and we know this, and we, and we see the struggles of that, we should be able to resort to responding, I don't know about all that. All I know is God, his Holy Spirit that teaches me, teaches us the truth and his son, Jesus Christ, who was crucified on the cross for me. So when we're, when we're confronted with different things of that nature, all we know is, all we need to know is God. Even if we don't know the details, even if we don't know how God's going to do it, how we're going to uh, get, get out of this situation, how God's going to uh, resolve the issue in the White House. We don't know. But all we know is God. And that's enough. That's enough. That's absolute surrender. That's one of it. Amen? Amen. If you were in church today, I'd tell you to tell your neighbor, all I need is God. But we're, we're here on Facebook Live, so just wave and give me an amen. I'll take that instead. Um, so we're going to just go on and talk a bit about this concept of surrender. And um, again, the, the, the books that we, that I put online that we will be referencing, I'm just going to introduce those very briefly here. Um, Absolute Surrender is um, by Andrew Murray. And um, you can, you can actually do a little bit of uh, research on who he is and what he, he did. He was, um, of course, an author, a Christian author in the late 1800s, early 1900s. And um, it says here he lived and ministered as both a pastor and a writer from the towns and villages in South Africa, if you can believe it, South Africa. Um, they were written in Dutch and translated into English. And what I like about um, Andrew Murray's writings is that he speaks to uh, particularly the edification of the believer. So um, he's, he's all about building the believer up in their faith, um, in prayer, in love. Um, he focuses on, on our growth and he really gets deep. He gets transparent. He, he just goes right to the meat of the matter. So um, good readings if, if you can get access to any of his material. So that is one, that's the, one of the main books we're coming from. Of course, the Holy Bible, um, if you, you should have that with you. And one of my uh, favorite devotionals um, by Oswald Chambers, my utmost for his highest. See, I've kind of used it. I had to tape it up, so, <laughs> but it still works. So that's the, that's the other um, reference book that I'm going to touch on while we continue on on tonight. So I just want to go ahead and break down um, some terms for you um, and just define when we say surrender, okay, what, what exactly does that mean when we say surrendering? Uh, Merriam-Webster Dictionary says, to surrender is to yield to the power, control, or possession of another upon compulsion or demand. So just, you know, listen carefully to this because these, um, as we go through these, um, I want you to 
apply these to yourself. Think about it as, as something that you're applying to, to your own self um, in your own relationship with Christ. So you yield to the power, control, or possession of another or to give up completely or agree to forego, especially in favor of another, to give oneself over to something or someone. So that's surrendering, completely giving of yourself or giving up completely, yielding to the power of something or someone else, okay? Now, uh, something also to think about when you um, don't surrender, or you're not completely surrendering to God, the opposite meaning of that is to resist. And as believers, you, you, you hate to think that you are actually resisting God. You're resisting his words, you're resisting his leading, you're resisting his, you know, his, the way he wants us to live, his will. So, but actually when, when we aren't really surrendering to him and we find ourselves in certain situations where uh, we really haven't given everything, then we're resisting him, whether you mean to or not. You're res we're, re we're resisting to a certain level. And of course, resisting means uh, to fight against something, to try to stop or prevent something, to remain strong against the force or effect of something. So you, 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 again, you would hate to think that you're fighting against God, but when, you, when you're not totally giving in to him, we're resisting him. And on some level, we're, we're actually kind of pushing against him in what he's trying to do in our lives. So again, important to understand this concept of complete and absolute surrender, how that plays in our lives and uh, important enough to, 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 to stop at, time, at times to see are, where are we in that? You know, where, where are we really and truly, genuinely, um, let's be transparent with ourselves. Where are we when we really say we're surrendering to God? Um, so I'm going to go on and talk about um, some additional terms. I'm just going to go ahead and say, if you don't have your pen and paper, you, you might need your pen and paper if you want to go ahead and start um, jotting some of these terms down in addition to the surrender definition we just, just talked about. And I say that because um, all of these uh, terms that we're going to get into actually play into and pertains to um, surrendering. They all play together in being able to surrender. So. The first one I want to touch on is simply obedience, to obey, uh, to, and which, which means to comply with the command, the direction, or request of a person to submit, again, to surrender to the authority of, we have to, we have to make a conscious choice to be obedient or there will be consequences. We, we saw that when we, when we just talked about uh, Adam and Eve in the garden, in, in the Genesis story, uh, two and three, those chapters, and, and what the, the consequences are because of their choice not to surrender to God's instruction in the Garden of Eden. Same with us. We have the same ability to choose. God wants us to choose him, and in choosing him, we're surrendering to him. When we don't obey, this is the first term that we're touching on, um, there will be consequences. We have to choose to surrender ourselves to the will of God over and beyond our own desires and temptations. Um, forgiveness and peace and joy come out of our obedience to God. And it's a requirement of our total surrender to him, our mind, our bodies, our will, everything. When we talk about surrendering, absolutely surrendering, it's not just in certain areas, but little, only certain things, portions. It's everything, everything, everything. So again, uh, under, under the term of obedience and obeying, uh, the word um, obey appears in the Bible uh, 69 times. This, this is how important it is um, that obeying, okay, comes into play when we're talking about surrendering. Um, obedience that word appears 12 times to be obedient 
uh, appears 16 times and obeyed past tense appears 41 times. And just 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 to look at a couple of of scripture, Luke 11, verse 28, it says that he replied, blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and obey it. Again, pressing the point of obeying. Second John 1, 6, it says, and this is love that we walk in obedience to his commands. As you have heard from the beginning, his command is that you walk in love. So even as we're talking about love, um, that has to do with obedience. We have, to, we have to be obedient to God because God is all about love. And when we can't line up with him, are we loving the way that we're supposed to love? Are we surrendering to him the way he's requiring of us to surrender to him, um, that he may love through us, that we may be completely surrendered to him. Amen. Amen. The second term I wanted to touch on tonight, uh, again, having to do with um, surrendering and the requirement um, in our act of surrendering is yield, to yield. Um, to yield means, of course, surrender means to yield ownership. So to relinquish control over what we consider ours, our property, our time, our rights. You know, we talk about what we have a right to, um, but we're supposed to yield ownership. And when we get to uh, talking about yielding and about absolute surrender, we understand that we own nothing. You know, we don't own anything. Everything belongs to God. And we yield all of ourselves to him, um, our time, our property, our rights, just all of ourselves, we yield to him. Luke 9.35 says, then there came a voice out of the cloud saying, this is my son, my chosen one, or my beloved, listen to and yield to, and here it is, and obey him. Again, these words, again, these terms work together in conjunction with one another, um, when you're when you're talking about surrendering, they all work together. Okay, Romans six and thirteen, another example. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. So yielding even our members, our bodies, our arms, our, our mouth, you know, we, God wants to use every aspect of us, okay, um, that we don't fall into um, unrighteousness, as it said here, um, our, our members as, as in, instruments of righteousness and not unrighteousness. So when we were surrendered, God, we are, we are simply acknowledging that again, what we own actually belongs to him. He is the giver of all good things. And we are responsible to care for what God has given us as stewards of his property, uh, by, but by surrendering to God, we admit that he is ultimately in control of everything, including our present circumstances. So, Again, when we surrender to him, we're yielding to him. He's in control of everything, including our present circumstances. Now, we, when we talk about our present circumstances, even in that, um, whatever we're going through, whatever we're dealing with, um, God can handle it. God, God can handle it. We, we want to get in and fix things. We want to get in and maneuver things. And, and we feel that you know, we can do it. You know, we, you know, we, we, we say that we we're yielding to God, but we still find ourselves feeling the urge to get in there and, and fix it and make it right and change it up and this and that, not really looking to him and his power and, and, and forgetting that, you know, he controls all this. He owns all of this. He, he cares for all of this. So again, remembering to yield to God, even in our circumstances, um, surrendering to God helps us listen to this, helps us to let go of whatever has been holding us back, okay, 
from God's best for our lives. I'm going to say that again. Surrendering to God helps us to let go of whatever has been holding us back from God's best for our lives. By surrendering to God, we let go of whatever has kept us from wanting God's ways first. Okay, we we need to um, put his ways first. That's that's our surrendering piece, putting his ways first uh, so that, that we're not holding back what it is that he wants to do, what he wants to do. Um, he knows how he wants it done. He knows what he wants to accomplish in our lives. He knows what's best for our lives. We don't know. We, we really don't know. He knows. So we, we yield to him in our situations and we, we surrender um, so that we don't hold back what it is that he wants to do, what he's trying to do in our lives. Um, and we'll talk more about, about that aspect of it and how sometimes us not surrendering, not yielding, not being obedient can, can hinder, can hinder actually what God is trying to do. Um, so when we talk about now our next terminology, um, I'm just going to try to stay true to the time tonight and we'll get to as much as we can. Um, the next term I want to talk about is submission. Big word, submission. Um, sometimes a scary word, I think, for some of us. But submit to submit means the act or fact of accepting or yielding to a superior force or to the will of authority of another person. Okay. Um, yielding to a superior force or to the will or authority of another person. Submit. As a believer, okay, and as a follower of Jesus Christ, one, uh, we completely gives up his own will and subjects his thoughts, his ideas, and deeds to the will and teaching of God, Jesus Christ and his Holy Spirit. So uh, so we, we completely give up our own, our own will. We have to give up our own will um, and our thoughts and our ideas and all of that needs to line up with God's thoughts and his ideas and his will and his will. Um, and we're going to talk about another term later on in the in the study, but I'm going to go ahead and just mention it because here it, it's very important and it's applicable that we have to trust. The whole concept of, of trusting in order to, to do these things, to submit, to yield, to obey. We, you know, there's a level of trust that has to be there. Now we're talking about um, how much we really trust God. How much, how much do we trust him with ourselves, with us, with, our, with what we think is ours? Um, his will and not our own will. This is, this is what I want to do. This is what we want to do. And it sounds good and it makes sense and it looks right and it feels right, but it may not be the will of God. And can we, um, as believers, as, as those who have committed to, to live for God, to be believers, to say, yes, I believe there's a God, I believe in Jesus Christ and, and what he's done for us, um, are we comfortable with trusting him with everything, trusting him enough to say, OK, not my will, but your will. I don't I don't agree <laughs> necessarily. I don't understand it. But your will, your ideas um, and even even in the times when we we don't really um, I think we have to get to a place where that is maybe the first the first place we should go is not to even come up with our own, but to, to go to God first to say, okay, your will, your idea, you know, let, let, me, let me know your will. Let me know what it is that you want me to do. And that's what I'll do. Be open to that. Develop a, a, a sense of being open and available for whatever it is that he wants to do, however he wants to do it, and then step into that. That's just, that's just your regular mindset whatever you want me to do. Let's do that. Amen. That's, that's what, that's what we are. So when we talk about submission, um, the act of yielding and accepting that superior force, the Bible 
talks about submission, um, 55 plus Bible verses, um, being subject to or being obedient, depending on some versions that you might have, it might say that rather than the actual word submit or submission. Um, James 4, 7 says, submit therefore to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Again, um, submitting to God, surrendering to him, um, the devil can't do nothing with that. <laughs> so, you know, that that covers us when we know that God has it. You know, God, God is on our side. God is taking care of that for us when we submit to him. OK, um, another term that we are uh, likening to absolute surrendering is dying to self. This concept of dying to self. Uh, when we surrender absolutely, we have to die to self. Um, we know Jesus is the prime example of dying to self. Um, he, he gave up himself um, to do that, which his father uh, commanded him to do, that his father required of him to do. And he knew what he had to do. And we know that it was a struggle, and he, but he had to do it. Um, he gave up quite a bit in order to do that. Um, he surrendered to the will of his father. Uh, we see this in the word of God, Philippians 2, 7 through 8. It says, but he made himself of no reputation, okay, and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men and being in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross, okay? And then Luke twenty two forty two says, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. So even though he knew this was a hard cup, okay, a bitter cup, he submitted himself to the will of his father. He surrendered completely to that. And he knew that he had the power to to make this go a whole nother way, but he submitted to the will of his father and, and, and did just that. Galatians 2.20, when we talk about dying to self, it says, we know this, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So this, again, this applies to each one of us, that Galatians 2.20, um, that we, we deny ourselves so that God and Christ can live in us to do what they will in us, okay? Um, you know, we, we become a new creature in Christ when we learn to uh, surrender everything and deny ourselves and um, die to self. So every, so it's not about self at all. It's not about me at all. It's not about um, everything I want, when I want it, how I want it. It's not about self. It's completely about the will of God for our lives and the purpose and provisions he has for us. And so this next term, we, we touched on it, this trust. I went ahead and talked on it earlier, but here we are trusting, trusting God. Um, in order to be able to surrender everything to him. Um, the assured reliance on the character, ability, strength, or truth of someone or something. This is trusting. The assured reliance on the character, ability, strength, or truth of someone or something to rely on uh, some, someone, you know, something, um, you know, has no control over it. Um, your firm belief in the reliability, the truth, the ability of someone or something. So trusting is an assured reliance on someone or something. In this case, of course, we're talking about God. Um, we know we can rely on him. Okay. Um, that, you know, even when we, we have no power over something and we really have none, only what God allows for us, we know we can trust him completely. We know that we, we, we ought to know that we can trust him completely um, so that in, in those times where we really don't know what to, what to do, 
what to do with the situation. Um, and, and there's nothing that we know we can do about it. You know, there's nothing that we, we can't fix it. You know, it's not something fix. Uh, we have to know and be okay with trusting God and surrendering that thing to him. Um, whether it's, it's, it's um, sickness or your finances, um, dealing with, with, with people in your lives that um, are, are challenging you, your boss, and you think, you think, what am I supposed to do with that? You know, you're going to give it to God. You know, we're just surrendering it all to God um, and, and, and knowing that he's able to do it. Um, so trust in the word of God. Um, it appears somewhere between 134 to 147 times, depending on your version of the Bible, once again. Um, and, I'm, and I'm putting out there um, how many times it's in the Bible and the use of it and that sort of thing, just so that we understand that all of these terms that we're talking about as they play um, all together with surrendering are very important. I mean, they're important. They are, they're in the word for a reason. And God is, is stressing those, those um, points of reference. He's stressing and giving us scripture about how to, how to use them, what, you know, when to use them, why they're important, because all these things work together. You know, and when we're talking about studying the word of God from the Old Testament to the New Testament, they, everything work, should work together. They should work together. It's, it's, it's one book and they work together. And so with all of those terms, you know, he's setting us up, you know, he's setting us up with, um, uh, I want you to surrender. You, you need to surrender. I require that you surrender to me. Um, and in doing so, let's talk about oh, being obedient. Let's talk about learning to trust me. Let's talk about um, knowing how to yield to me. Okay. Um, all these terms that I've just gone over, um, they're necessary. They are necessary in order to be able to completely, absolutely surrender to God. Okay. All right. So I want to go into um, just uh, some some examples of um, where we see this in the Old Testament as well as in the New Testament. Again, I say the old and the new. You know, absolute surrender. Um, God requires that. He re He required it then. He requires it now. Um, it's, it's a big deal. It's a big deal when we talk about walking with God and taking advantage of the best that he has for us. Um, in the old Testament, we, we talk about, um, Abraham, prime example, Abraham, and he, he, um, had to surrender his own self surrender. Okay. Uh, when God told him to just abandon his, his friends, his country and, and go to a land he didn't even know. Didn't know where he was going, why he was going. Just go. This is Genesis 12, um, 12 verse one. It says, now the Lord said unto Abraham, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. He had to trust him enough to take his family, <laughs> everything he knew, all his stuff, pack it up, just, just go go that way not knowing where he was going okay do we not find ourselves in that situation as well at times where we just have to walk a path take a journey um, take some steps not knowing what's up ahead you know where we're going um what we're going to face what challenges challenges we might have what trials we have to contend with what sacrifices we may have to make. But God is, is, is requiring of us to take this journey, take this journey that, that he, needs, he needs for us to take, okay? Um, and, I, and I stress that he needs for us to take. Many times it's not a, for us. It's not for us. Even though blessings will come, but in our obedience and trusting and yielding so that God can accomplish what it is that he's trying to accomplish in this world, um, that it will impact others for his glory. Sometimes we we just won't know. We don't won't know. We may never even know how it how it positively impacted people. But we have to go anyway. We have to do 
anyway, even if it don't feel right and it don't look right and 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 you don't have all the pieces to the puzzle because he only gives you a little bit at a time. That's just what he does. Um, we have to go. We have to go and do anyway. So Abraham had to do that. He had to he had to surrender himself to the will of God. Um, and if you continue on, as we continue on to study um, in the Old Testament um, uh, examples of where God required surrendering, absolute surrender. And yes, what Abraham did was an absolute surrender. Um, he had to he had, he had to give up um, the possibility of losing his son, Isaac, um, to sacrifice Isaac. God set him on a journey with that. And, you know, he, he had no idea what, what was, what was really going on there, what God was really going to do, but he knew this is what God said to do. Um, and of course God stepped in. Um, so I, what we're going to continue talking about in this study is, um, more about, um, in the old Testament, um, in this case, Abraham and his journey, um, as we get into more about surrendering absolutely and um, what that means to us, um, what that means to God, uh, why we must do that. And then not only that, but in that process of surrendering absolutely, how God actually um, helps us do that. So we've talked so far about um, um, all the way from Adam and Eve and 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 the situation we they found themselves in and um, what they were supposed to surrender to and did not. They had a choice, and and we find ourselves now with the various terms that also apply to surrendering, how they play together to help us be able to surrender. Um, then there's also now we see in the Old Testament where we see it in, with Abraham and what he had to go through as well, his experiences, so that we can see um, um, how that might relate to some of our own experiences and as well as a lesson. It's a lesson learned for us when we talk about it. We'll get into the New Testament examples as well on absolute surrender. We'll get into um, Andrew Murray's book on absolute surrender and some of your some takeaways for you as well um, around what God does to aid us in being able to surrender, not just leaving us out there to um, figure out how, how to do it on our own. Um, there are aids in scripture that actually helps us understand that while it may, may seem like this is an impossible task, <laughs> it may seem like how do, how do you surrender absolutely? You know, us in these bodies that we have, us um, um, having now to deal with the consequences of what Adam and Eve did in the garden, that we now have this sin nature upon us. Um, it's, it's intrinsic to us. So the pride and, and, the, and the, the, the consciousness of self all the time, um, it's a struggle. It's a daily struggle to no, to surrender, to choose to surrender. It's a day-by-day -day effort, a day-by-day -day action, a day-by-day -day decision. Um, and there are certain practices that we put in place to help us do that. Um, and then there is uh, an action even on God's um, behalf that um, enables us to do that, in fact. So we'll talk more about that as well so that it does not seem like something that we will not be able to accomplish in this life. We, we, we can. So um, I know that we're coming to the end, um, close to the end of our, our hour. And I wanted just to leave some time if there were um, any questions, comments, or anything of that nature. I'm hoping that this was so far a good study. And um, I'm hoping that you'll, you'll hang with me while we go through the rest of it and get into some more details and points of reference and other pieces of scripture that um, I think will be useful um, as we continue our, um, our study and our trek to um, accomplishing 
absolute surrender in our lives, in our walk with Christ, in our relationship with him, um, that we can, we can make better strides in our journey with him um, while we're yet here trying to do a work for him. So um, I will say this also, um, if there's anyone out there who don't uh, have a relationship with Christ and uh, you, you need to have a relationship with Christ, you want to know more about this kind of relationship that we're talking about, um, you want to be able to um, have that the weight lifted of trying to figure out life all by yourself and and you'd love to be able just to give it all over to God and say, here, take it. I can't make it, you know, by myself. I can't do this on my own. Um, then I, I submit to you that and I encourage you to um, receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. The Bible tells us that if we believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God, um, we believe that he lived and died and rose again on the third day. Um, if we confess and believe that, the Bible says that we um, we shall be saved, that we we ha we we will have that relationship, that the Holy Spirit will come and and reside in us, <clears throat> that will, He will help us to live this life. He will help us uh, to build on that relationship and learn of God and learn of who we are in God. Okay, and give us that that we need to endure this journey. So. Um, if you have not done that, I encourage you to do that today. Um, and all you have to do is just go to God and say, Lord, forgive me of my sins. I believe that Jesus is your son. I believe he died for me. He lived for me. He died for me and he rose again for me. Um, I want to give my life to you. Um, and then you are saved. If you're genuinely saying that, you genuinely receive that. Um, you genuinely believe that, then yes, yes, you, you are saved and the Holy Spirit will come in and take residence in you. So I encourage you to go to our website at www.trinityjustin.com to the salvation page. Take a look at um, more about salvation um, and find out more about um, if you have done this and, and received Christ on, on tonight, um, more information about what you've just done and what you now need to do. So take some time to do that as well. And let me know on the website if, if you have made that life change. We want to celebrate that with you as well. Um, okay, so um, we're going to go ahead and close out in prayer. I thank you all for, for joining tonight. Um, this will be posted on the site for those who um, were unable to join on tonight. Um, feel free to share to others as well that they may be able to join next week on Thursday night at seven o'clock. Um, I'm hoping this time does work for most people. It may, may be a, still a little too early for some who work. Um, if that is the case, then we can certainly <clears throat> certainly change the time to maybe, maybe eight o'clock if that works better. Um, but nevertheless, um, God is good. I thank you so much. We're gonna do a quick word of prayer before we leave and then I'll got, let you guys go. Thanks so much. So Father, we thank you God just for this time. We thank you, God, that you've allowed us to come together, God, just to study your word on and to learn more about um, being surrendered to you, oh God, to, to be absolutely surrendered to you, Father God, that you may do uh, your full work in us, oh God, not just with the, with the portion of ourselves, not just with a small piece of ourselves, but with our entire selves so that you may be, may be able to use us completely, Father God and that we may be able to do everything that you have purposed for us to do, and that you may be able to accomplish the fullness that we might be able to reap uh, the best of what you have for us. So we thank you for this opportunity. We thank you that you have given us uh, multiple chances to get it right. And Father, we thank you, God, that you love us so much and that you cover us and you protect us and you provide for us. Oh so God, even when we didn't know you, you knew us. So we're so grateful. So we thank you. We love you, God. I pray for all of those on the line tonight that you will bless them and their families, their homes, meet them at the point of their every need on tonight. Father, we thank you. We love you. And it's in Jesus name that we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you all for joining. Hopefully I will see you again on next Thursday at 7 p.m. All right. Be blessed.